started. What's up? Welcome, y'all. For folks here live with me um, and for folks that are watching on YouTube, my name is Whitney. Um, I am a GMAT GRE and Executive Assessment Instructor at Manhattan Prep. As you may notice, my voice is a little off today, so I'm hoping that it will last us through today's session. Tonight's session is one of a multi-part session on rates and work. So we'll start this evening um, talking about, let me go ahead and get my screen shared for y'all. Um, so we're gonna start this evening um, on sort of an all-encompassing look at rates and work. Um, we'll start with our fundamental formula. So work equals rate times time or uh, distance equals rate times time. And then tonight we'll work on the distance side of rates, not work. And so we'll start ourselves off with um, more complex distance problems. So rather than just a single fundamental formula, we'll move up to average speed. Once we've talked about what that means, average speed, <clears throat> we'll work on sort of those like traditional test prep questions where you've got you know, two cars or trains, they're driving at each other, they're driving apart, or they're chasing each other. So we'll work on those this evening. In our next session of this, we'll move to the work problems where we'll talk about how we handle when there are different workers who are working together, but at different rates. And then we'll confront the problems where you've got a big group of workers working together, but they all happen to have the same rate. This is often like machines or robots, right? There's a bunch of them all working at the exact same rate, right? They have an identical rate. And then in that second part, we'll wrap things up with our advanced situations. Yeah, cool. So in tonight's part one, as I said, we're gonna start with this sort of fundamental formulas, both for distance as well as for your work type problems. So when we think about distance, again, these are like cars, trucks, people, bikes, whatever. They're driving, they're driving towards each other. They're driving away from each other. <clears throat> There's maybe just one of them driving around, <laughs> right? Or riding around or walking around or running or whatever it is. Um, work is when we start to talk about like, it takes this person this long to do a job. It takes this other person this long to do a different job. And then ask the question, how long does it take for the two of them working together? Yeah. So um, we will, by the end of this, I'm going to sit here and yeah, thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, my allergies are sort of set off. Um, and so now my voice is a little crazy. So I hope it's not too terribly obnoxious. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing my best. But yeah, thank you. So by the end of this two-part series, my goal is that you will know the following six scenarios. You'll know how to recognize them. And then you'll have a strategy to apply every single time. So <clears throat> one of the things I love the most about distance rate and work rate time problems are that they really are sort of archetypes, meaning that when you see them, you can treat them the same way almost every time. So there'll be an exception when things get really weird, but we'll learn to recognize when we're in the exception as well, which also likely means that you're in a very hard problem, right? And so in the world of the GMAT, we know that if we're in a hard problem, those are really good candidates to bail, particularly if we struggle with time. So what I want is for you to be able to say like, oh, this is this kind of problem. I'm going to apply this strategy, period, right? And then here's how I'm going to do it. So I want you to be able to have sort of a cheat sheet that's going to look very similar to the one that I'm starting for us on the board. And then you'll build it out. So to give you a little bit of foreshadowing, um, tonight, again, we're going to focus in on the distance problems. But by the end of this and the next time we meet, we will have covered all of the distance problems as well as all of the work problems. Yeah. So again, we'll start with our most sort of fundamental formulas. And we're going to do this in just a second. We use those fundamental formulas when we talk about a single character, a single actor, a single thing, a train, a car, a bus, a person, traveling a single whole distance, right? There's no starting and stopping. There's no changing of speeds. It's like the person leaves point A and is gonna go to point B. The analog in the world of work is that you have one person who is completing one job 
They're not getting any help to complete that job. It's just them. They're not starting and stopping. Someone else isn't joining and then like disappearing. It's like one person does a thing. Now for the setup for these problems, they might read a little bit more complexly than that, but we want to identify that what we are being given is purely information, wholly information about the, the details of a single trip or a single job. Okay. In the world of distance, we build on this in two weird ways. And in fact, I call them weird because number two and number three that I'm about to share with you, we do not do in the same way at all. We do them very differently than we do the single thing traveling a single distance problem. So one option is we still have a single actor, but it's breaking up the trip. So instead of taking one trip from point A to point B, we have a bunch of different stops along the way. It might be that they go from home to work at one speed, they come back at a different speed. So generally the key here is going to be that the rates are changing. The other thing that we'll work on is when we talk about two different you know, vehicles traveling towards each other, traveling away from each other or chasing one another, right? So these are the three major categories in the world of distance rate problems. <clears throat> if we move into the category of work rate problems, we also have three basic general categories and they are different than the three that we see in distance problems, you know, cause here we are. So again, we've got the single thing doing a single job at a single rate. We then have a situation of where two things are working together. They might be working at, against one another or they're working to help each other complete a job, but it'll always be two, maybe three different actors, computers, um, robots, machines, humans, whatever. Um, the key here is much like number three under distance that in this situation, they'll be working at different rates. And then we've got a same rates, but now we've got lots of people working together all at the same rate to complete some number of jobs. All right, so let's do this thing. Let's talk fundamental relationship. So the fundamental relationship is technically a work relationship. So that work relationship is work is equal to rate times time. Right? So some unit of work is equal to the amount of time spent times how quickly I get something done. So for example, right, if Whitney can um, build uh, four birdhouses every three hours, how many birdhouses does she build in nine hours? So there are a lot of ways that we can look at this relationship. So four birdhouses every three hours, we could automatically see that as a rate. Birdhouses per hour rates are always some unit of work divided by time, right? In fact, if we were to rearrange this relationship, rate is itself, divide both sides by time, a unit of work divided by a unit of time. Now that said, if I've been given a problem, like if Wick can build four houses every three hours, how many birdhouses does she build in nine hours? You probably just use logic here. Every three hours, she's building four birdhouses. So six hours, she'd have built eight birdhouses. Nine hours, she'd have built 12 birdhouses. To solve this formally, we would actually do this in potentially two equations. The first equation would set up work and hours as an opportunity to then solve for the rate itself. So we'll call that time. So this would be four birdhouses is equal to some rate times three hours. If I divide both sides by three, I get four thirds of a birdhouse per hour. Then if I wanted to find the number of birdhouses, so how many birdhouses 
Does she build in nine hours? I build a second equation. She can build some number of birdhouses at a rate of four thirds birdhouse per hour times nine hours. Note that our nine hour units would cancel. Three would go into nine twice, or excuse me, three times. Okay, so three goes into nine three times. And so we could solve it more formally. Work is four times three or 12, the units, birdhouses. Pretty simplistic. I feel like for most of you, you're probably looking at this thinking like no big deal, right? Which is fine. So our fundamental work equals rate times time formula is what we'll apply anytime we've got folks working together. Now it turns out that our distance equals rate times time is the work formula. It's the exact same formula. It's just that in this case, the unit of work is a distance, right? So now this unit of work has changed from being a birdhouse to a distance, a measurement of how far someone goes. That's the work that's being done. But we're gonna do the exact same thing again. Right? Like very little is gonna change. Um, we'll be in the exact same place. And so an equivalent of this might be that if we had, let's say wit, drives, um, 90 miles every three hours, how far, or if we drive that, how far does she drive in, again, we'll go nine hours, um, or let's go a little small one. How long, how far does she drive in two hours? Well, you might be able to just do the math, right? Totally understandable. Um, logic would let you get there. But just to see how it would formally play out, we've got a distance, a time. Um, and so we'd start with 90 miles equals some rate times three hours. That means my rate <clears throat> is 90 miles every three hours. Or I could reduce in this case, my rate is 30 miles per hour, right? We typically have a unit here. Now I wanna know how far does she drive in two hours, okay? So I want a distance at a rate of 30 miles per hour times two hours. My hour units will cancel just like our you know, time unit canceled before. And now our distance is 60 miles. I think for most folks, the most fundamental or basic relationship of distance <clears throat> equals rate times time. Or alternatively, work equals rate times time is pretty straightforward. Okay, now they can make the questions look a little crazy. They can make them look a little wonky, but generally speaking, right, they're pretty straightforward, fairly straightforward. So let's try one, right? You can use any of the logic that you'd like for it, um, but we'll do a distance just to kind of get us going in the world of distances this evening. Um, and so let's try this one. We'll take about a minute. Right, for problems like this, we'd want the math to be relatively quick once we'd figured out what kind of question it is. Since I'm sort of telling you already what it is, we'll shave some time off. And so here you go. And as you finish, send me your message in the chat window.
All right. <clears throat> so let's take a look. We are in a situation where we've got a person walking a loop and the problem tells us how quickly she does it. Then we have a new scenario. If she changes her walking speed, how long would it take her to do this one trek at this new speed, right? Like, so again, it may be two different scenarios, but we are in the same world of each little piece they give us is a single trip. It doesn't say, you know, she walks the first half of this 12 mile scenic loop in three hours, and then she returns at a speed that's half. So we're on the same, right? It's, it's one trip from start to finish and the details are the information about that, okay? So that's the signal that we're dealing with a pretty like straightforward, use the fundamental equation. Anytime I'm dealing with any problem that has an equation. So distance rate time, work rate time, average, like just average, right? Like some divided by number of terms, geometry formulas, whatever the case may be. The first thing I do is like sort of off in the corner of my working space, I write my formula. So D equals RT. A way to think about this is dirt, dirt distance is rate time. So the dirt formula is the way I've always thought about it. <clears throat> so we have the first formula that tells us that she's able to walk a 12 mile scenic loop in three hours. So this is a distance and this is a time. We're gonna plug it in to the formula. So 12 miles equals some rate times three hours. So our rate is 12 over three miles per hour or four miles per hour. Now, if she reduces her speed by half, now we have to think about this for a minute reduces her speed by half. So instead of going four miles per hour, she's going to now go two miles per hour. So under my new distance equals rate time, she's gonna go two miles per hour. And it says how many hours, that's my time, would it take her to walk the same loop twice? So 12 miles, two times, so 24 miles. And then I'm gonna multiply by time. So I'm gonna divide both sides in order to get to time. This is 24 miles divided by two miles per hour. Now, because this is a fraction, we would take the reciprocal. That's how we end up with 12 miles times hours per mile. So we can even check our units and confirm that this would give us 12 hours. Now, once you get comfortable with these, you don't necessarily have to track units, particularly for these like straightforward problems, but it can be useful while you're learning just to keep track of what units you've been given. So our correct answer is C. Okay. Next up, we need to talk about what happens when we have um, our number two item. So um, on our list of distances, the second thing that we're gonna talk about is what happens when we have a single thing that travels multiple legs of a trip. Okay, so multiple legs of a trip. Now, I want to give you a moment to kind of read over this question because I'd like for you to be able to see subtly the difference, okay? So if we give and actually I'll put two on the same screen for a moment so you can kind of see the Brenda question and you can see the new Anna question. All right. Okay, so we're gonna start working on this one together. So I want you to notice that yes, we talk about Brenda on different trips, right? Brenda walking the scenic loop at one speed, 
then Brenda walking the same scenic loop twice at a different speed, but that's not the same as breaking up one trip into multiple speeds. So the key to these problems will be this like, oh, she got, she went from like point A to B at one speed, but then she returned from B back to A at a different speed. Um, or she covered half of the trip at one speed and then the second half at this other speed. Often the distances are missing. It is common for the distances to be left off of these problems. But the, the crucial language we're often looking for is average rate or average speed. Okay, average rate or average speed. Now the first and I think most important aspect of these problems is if no distance is given, invent your own. Okay, invent your own. So if they don't give me a distance, I'm gonna invent my own. That's the first piece of key information for this type of problem. And then the second is the formula. So we are not going to use the standard distance equals rate times time formula. In fact, we're going to use an alternative of that formula. And we sort of saw the alternative of that formula um, when I looked at it for work, where we can see that a rate is a work divided by a time. We can also see that a rate is a distance divided by a time. So generally speaking, when I am in an average speed problem, what I will do is I will use the average speed or average rate is equal to distance over time. But because there's multiple parts of this trip, we're going to look at it as the total distance divided by the total time. Now you might be sitting there thinking, but wait, Whitney, if she rode her bike at five miles an hour and the same distance rode her bike back at 15 miles an hour, can we just take the plane average? Like, isn't her average is gonna be 10 miles per hour? And the thing is, is that that's, I think why the test really likes this type of question, because it's quite easy to sort of sucker people in to picking the straight average for average speed. However, let's think about averages, right? It's the sum over the number of terms. All averages have this kind of like weighted concept to them. And it's true, right? That the distances are the same. However, when we look at the formula for a rate, what we're dividing by, which in a world of weighted averages would be where the weights live, what we're dividing by isn't distance, right? So speed isn't weighted by distance. Speed or rate is weighted by time. Okay, so our speed is weighted by an amount of time. And so if Anna had spent the same amount of time going five miles an hour and 15 miles an hour, then we could just take the straight average. However, if what's the same is anything other than time, then we need to think of it as the more formal equation. So generally for me, I just always, as soon as I see average rate for like the entire trip, I put this formula on my paper. And then I remind myself that if no distance has been given, we can straight invent our own. Okay. So if we think, let's sketch it out for distance problems. Once I'm past the like most basic problem, I'm traditionally gonna at least draw something. So, you know, here's home and let's call this school. 
and she's going to go this direction at five miles per hour. She's going to go this direction at 15 miles per hour. So I'm going to try and think up a distance that would be easy for five miles an hour and 15 miles an hour. So, you know, if the distance was five miles, if she does five miles in an hour, it would take her one hour to do five miles. However, that makes the 15 miles an hour a little weird. So I'll typically pick some number that I could, it doesn't matter how big my hours come up to. Like, it doesn't matter that I make home and school like a billion miles apart, that's okay, right? It doesn't matter that she drives for 25 hours to get to school, that part's irrelevant. We just wanna pick mileages that are easy to kind of mentally manipulate with these rates. So often it's gonna be some sort of common denominator um, or something that I know is pretty easily divisible by five and 15. And so that's the, the, the rule here. You want something divisible by your rates. Kind of your good rule of thumb. So let's just call it 30, whatever, we'll make the distance 30 miles. And now we need to think about what that means. If I'm only going at a rate of five miles per hour to go 30 miles, that's gonna be six hours to get me there, right? Five miles every hour. To get me back, it's gonna only take two hours. Now we bring this over into our formula. The total distance is 30 and 30, so 30 each way. The total time is six hours on the way there and two hours on the way back. She travels 60 miles, takes eight hours. So reduce both of those by four, that's 15 over two or 7.5 miles per hour. Notice this is not 10 miles per hour. It's not 10 miles per hour because look at how much time she spent going only five miles an hour relative to how much time she spent going 15 miles an hour. That five miles an hour is going to, to make up a much bigger chunk of her drive. So a couple of things. Again, if we're going to solve it form formally, we're going to use our average rate formula. If they don't give me a distance, which to be fair, they rarely do. If they don't give me a distance, I can invent my own, which is great. Um, and then if, um, I know it's not going to be the basic average, right? I'm going to plug it all in. It won't be the just exact, plain, straightforward average. Yeah. So this is, a, a situation where um, there are some ways of estimating. Um, and I would say that it's, you know, pretty, it can be nice to estimate these off the answer choices, um, but it's not always possible to estimate off the answer choices, um, unfortunately. But at times we can, what you need to know is that the average will always trend in the direction of the slower rate, okay? So the average will always trend in the direction of the slower rate. So this could be something that's given to us, even if we've got like multiple, like they went, they came back, they went, they came back. So I want to give you a slightly more complicated version of this story. Um, and you're going to fill it in the same way, right? So we're going to kind of write down on your paper that average speed is equal to total distance over the total time. Remind yourself that there's no distance given you can invent your own. And think about something that would be divisible by all of my rates. And then let's give this one a go. Here you go.
All right, if you have not given me your answer, please do. Beautiful, okay. So notice it says average speed. So that's kind of the dead giveaway, average speed or average rate. And we see that it's like one trip, but like broken into segments and the rate is what's changing. So I'm gonna kind of sketch it out. I got home, love all my characters going from home to school. So I've got a trip there at 30 miles per hour. I've got a trip back at 40 miles per hour. And then I've got another trip back at 60 miles per hour. And then notice that for each of these, they say it's the same distance, right? All along the same route. They could technically make the distances different by either telling you specifically what the different distances are, which would make things a little easier, or they could give you relative distances. So if we had the first half of the trip followed by the second half of the trip, those two distances are equal. But if they said, you know, they went the first third of the distance and then the next two thirds, we know that the second part of that distance needs to be twice as long as the first. So we're just gonna track whatever they tell us. I need to use my, you know, rate, average rate equals total distance over total time. And they didn't give me a distance. And so I'm going to find something that's divisible by 30, 40, and 60. So <laughs> Rajesh lives 120 miles from school. Maybe this was on different days, <laughs> right, that he's traveling. So on the first day, 30 miles per hour, that's four hours. At 40 miles per hour, he's doing 40, 80, 120. That's three hours. And on the final day, at 60 miles per hour, it just takes two hours. You can still use your fundamental distance equals rate times time formula with each of these to solve for the times if you'd like. Okay, so our total distance is 120 miles, three times, don't forget, right? We've gone all three. And then our times are four, three, and two. So our total distance is 360 divided by nine, which in this case is 40. Nine goes into 36 four times, bring down the zero. So 40 um, miles per hour. Okay. Thoughts, questions, comments, concerns, how we feeling? How are we feeling? Cool. Dig it. Nice. Okay. Let's do one more of these just to kind of confirm. Um, again, just setting them up. Here we go. We'll do this one a little bit more quickly.
Awesome. <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna set up our map. We've got home, let's do it again, home and school. And we're walking halfway at nine miles per hour. And we're gonna do the other half at three miles per hour. And so I need a distance that I could divide by nine miles per hour and three miles per hour. So I could just do nine miles, but not, sometimes when I repeat numbers, I get a little confused. So I'm just gonna go 18 miles. So each half of the trip, because it's the same, is gonna be 18. My average speed or rate rather is total distance or D1 plus D2 over total time. In this case, that's gonna be total distance is 18 plus 18. Total time, nine miles per hour will take me two hours. Three miles per hour will take me six hours. So we should expect that the speed is gonna be a lot closer to three than it is to nine. And so this is two plus six is eight. So I've got 36 over eight. I'll cut both of those by four. So that's nine over two or 4.5 miles per hour. Nicely done, so nicely done. Okay. All right, so now we need to look at the last. So let me add this to our little notes from before, our little cheat sheet, okay? When we have a single thing traveling multiple legs, what we wanna do is we wanna set up average rate equals total distance over total time. And we wanna remind ourselves that we can, if the distance isn't given, we can invent our own. And generally speaking, we want to think of something that is divisible by our rates. That's gonna make the math a lot easier to come up with on our own, okay? So when I see somebody traveling, you know, took halfway to go here, halfway to go there, then we will look at adding or um, inventing our own number. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions before we move into our last one? Okay. All right. So last but not least, let's look at what happens when we have characters that are moving towards or away or chasing. So I often think of this a little bit like Pac-Man, right? So in the world of two things working, or it's always two vehicles, by the way. So we have a couple of scenarios. So we got one, um, two things. Uh, what do we got? There we go, let me fix the pen, there we go. So our last scenario for driving, common scenario for driving, is this idea that technically there's like three scenarios, but it turns out that two of the scenarios um, are the same. So we've got, if you've got two things traveling, they can do one of three things. You could have two people or things on opposite ends of a distance and they're traveling towards one another. You could have, that's situation A, they're traveling towards one another. You could have two things and they actually start usually somewhere in the middle, right? They start in the same space. And they start heading away from one another until they get a, a certain distance apart. The last version is that you've got two things 
and they're both heading in the same direction, but one is chasing the other. And generally this game goes on until the one who was behind has either caught up or has gotten ahead some amount. Okay. So we've got our first situation is a single thing moving around at a single speed, right? Um, and it's, or you might change that speed over its single trip, but like each individual trip has one speed. We then have one actor that is moving at um, different speeds at different parts of their trip, right? So along the trip, their speed um, is changing. Last but not least, we now have a situation where we've got more than one thing traveling towards or away from one another, okay? So I want you to start to kind of identify these as, okay, these are different, right? Like these feel different. They're moving in different directions. They're working differently. For a lot of these, I'm going to show you how to actually solve them. But generally speaking, you're going to be doing these problems with answer choices. <laughs> you will have multiple choice, right? And so the multiple choice part is crucial here. Right? The multiple choice part is absolutely crucial here. Okay, so we're gonna do a kind of weird question. So we're gonna take our time putting it together and then we'll try a somewhat simpler version, right? Okay, so give this question a read and let me give you some answer choices. Okay, so I wanted to give you a chance just to kind of like make sense of the question. Now, I've up to this point, we've done nothing but formulas. Here's the thing, for this type of question, vehicles or people or whatever, driving towards each other or away from each other or chasing each other, you technically can use a formula. And we'll actually revisit the more formula version of these at, in our next session when we talk about work. But, I almost never use a formula because there are answer choices. And honestly, even if there weren't, it is almost always easier to like just move these agents in space. So I always sketch a picture and then write out a table to track how far my little trains or my cars or my bikes or whatever are moving. So let's start with the picture. We've got trains A and B. And they are at opposite ends of a 200 mile track. At a, oh, excuse me, let me change up these numbers a little bit just to make our lives a little bit easier, my bad. So we'll make this five and three, that'll be a little easier. Um, oh no, we'll keep it where it was. Just kidding. We'll do 10 and three. That's fine. It works. Um, I'll change up your answer choices. My bad. I gave you pretty terrible ones. Um, 
So we'll use this. So it'll just be easier without the answer choices. Um, because I think there's actually a typo in those answer choices. So um, we'll, we'll fix it. But let's say we've got A starts at one end of a 200 mile track, right? And it's traveling in one direction and B is traveling in the other. Now, the first thing is I don't know how fast they're going. I need to know in order to build my little table, I need to know how fast these two actors are traveling. Um, and so if it takes train A, 10 hours to do 200 miles, I'm gonna put that in the formula. So 200 miles distance, here's my distance, equals rate times time. 200 equals distance. My rate in this case is what I'm solving for. And my time is 10 hours. I divide, this train is doing 200 over 10 or uh, or 200 over 10, excuse me, too many zeros down here. 200 over 10, uh, which is the same as 20 miles per hour. So train A is doing 20 miles per hour. Train B takes uh, oops, six hours, excuse me, put that back, there we go. So train B is coming in at 200 miles, every six hours, which is a hundred over three, which isn't perfect, but we'll make it work. Right? So this is about 33 and a third. So 33.3 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now what we need to do is think about where they're both gonna start and where they need to go. So I'll put my little table. My table is always like A and B. And I sort of always start my table at zero hour. Like let's pretend they both start at the same time. Cause in this story they do, they start at the exact same time and they're traveling towards one another. All right, at zero hour, neither of them have gone anywhere. I'm gonna start counting forward in the hours. So at one hour, machine or train A will have gone 20 machine or train B will have gone 33.3 miles. Together, they've gone 53.3 miles, but that's not enough to cover the 200 mile track. Once they go a second hour, train A will have gone 40, train B will have gone 66.3. They've covered over a hundred miles. So there's still a little under a hundred miles for them to meet, but they have not covered the full 200 miles. We'll go again at three hours. We've got 60 miles for train A. We've done another 33.3, so we're up to 100 miles. We've covered 160 miles of our 200 mile distance, but we're not there yet. At four hours, <clears throat> we've got another 20 miles. And then this one's got another 33. At this point, having gone 133 its direction and 80 its direction, they have passed each other. And so I'm going to go look in my answer choices and I'm going to find one answer choice that is somewhere between 60 and 80. If that is not enough, right? It says how far, how many miles had train A traveled. I'm gonna look for the answer that's between these two, between 60 and 80 miles. If this is too broad, I will come in, right? Maybe there's more than one answer in there. I'll come in and I'll squeeze in half an hour. So in a half an hour, this one's only gone 10 miles. This one's gone 15, 16 and some change. So about a hundred and let's call it 17. At this point, they have not quite met one another, right? Train A has gone 70, train B has gone 117. So we're at like 190. So we need another little bit of time. I'm going to choose the one answer that is between 70 and 80. I've never seen, ever seen a problem where you had to be any more granular than that. That was always enough, always enough. So we're gonna try another one. It's a little bit different, okay? This one's a little bit different. but I want you to think about 
still same idea is that we've got these two, you know, characters um, either moving towards each other or away from each other. Um, we'll look at one chasing one another. I know we're a little bit over time, but we'll look at one chasing each other. But I want you to think about, you know, no matter how weird or bizarre they get, right? Um, we'll think at, we'll think about, you know, how we'd set it up. So get your picture. Uh, actually, we'll do, let's go. I'm going to give you a little bit harder one. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's go. Here you are. So we'll do this one and then have you just sort of solve for it. Here you go. All right, so we'll start to set it up. We've got two people standing 14 miles apart. So I'm gonna put person A down here, person B down here, and they're headed towards one another. Their job, this person does uh, three miles per hour. This person does four miles per hour and they have to cover 14 miles together. So I'll set up my little table. Um, at zero hours, and you'll see why I kind of like the zero hour. Zero hour can be really useful if you have one party starting before the other. So one party gets going and then somebody else starts an hour later. Having a zero hour, so here's where they both stand and then at one hour, one's moved, but the other one hasn't, that kind of thing can be really beneficial. Um, so at the zero hour, um, they're both at having gone nowhere. At one hour, uh, person A has gone three miles, person B has gone four. They've covered a total of seven. Then at the two hour mark, person A has gone six miles, 
Person B has gone eight miles. That is a total of 14 miles. And so we're there, our two hour mark. And so we could say two hours or how far has A gone? Six miles, like it doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. Okay. So there is one other situation sort of in the same place. Um, where we're kind of getting this idea of, right? Like if you start them in the middle, you walk them in opposite directions, you start them on the edges, you walk them towards each other. Um, you can do the exact same thing if they're chasing each other. You just need to kind of pay attention um, to like how you're relating the numbers in the chart. So we'll look at one more. And then again, we'll look at next time um, a way to use a formula for these that can sometimes be helpful. But take a moment to kind of clarify the question for yourself. And then notice if my answer choices aren't whole hours. Right? My answers are in uh, thirds of an hour. And so that might change a little bit how I think about, I mean, I'm going to move them and then I might have to wiggle them back. But we can still utilize our answer choices. Okay, So like take about a minute and then we'll talk about it together. Okay, so we have to dig through all the wording, but we draw the picture. So we've got some criminals hijacking a train and they're headed south. So I'm gonna be like, okay, here are my criminals. Let me make some space. Here are my criminals and they're headed south. And exactly at the same time, a police car. Okay, so here are my criminals. A police car, and there's 50 miles in here. Started driving south at the same time trying to catch the criminals. And we've got to figure out, right? How long is it going to take for the police to catch this train? Okay, cool. I'm going to build a table. In these situations, I always build a table. Police, criminals. The police are traveling at 80 miles per hour and the criminals are traveling at 50 miles per hour. So my zero hour moments, my police are nowhere, but I'm gonna account for this difference by saying that the criminals already have a 50 mile head start. Now I'm gonna go instead of full hours, like one hour to two hours, I'm gonna be ready to go one hour, one and a half hours, two hours, two and a half hours. I should only need to do the three. 
Um, so at one hour, the police have gone 80 miles. So they're at like mile marker 80. The criminals have gone 50 miles on top of their head start. So they're at a hundred miles. The police have not caught up with the criminals. Right? They're only at mile marker 80 while the criminals are at mile marker hundred. And so an hour is not enough. Now I'm gonna jump ahead to two hours. And so in two hours, the police have gone 80, another 80 miles. So they're up to 160 miles. The criminals have only gone 50 miles. So they're up to 150. So at the two hour mark, police have caught up and surpassed the criminals. So I know that two hours is too far. I'm gonna back up. I'm gonna do the 1.5 hour mark. So in half an hour, instead of 80 miles, the police are only doing 40. So from 80, it's gonna be you know halfway the distance here. So they've got 120 miles. Half of the distance here would be 125 miles, which means at an hour and a half, the police have not quite caught the criminals. And so my answer has to be a number that's bigger than an hour and a half. And so I'm gonna pick some. So anytime I've got two things driving towards each other, driving away from each other or chasing each other, I'm gonna set up a picture, figure out how fast they're going. And then I'm gonna move them like little plastic toy cars in space. Now, again, we will talk next time about how to, there are some formulas that you can use that can sometimes be quick. Not always, but they can sometimes be helpful. So it's good to know them. Um, but for now, know that anytime I have things traveling at different rates, I find their rates if I don't know them already. And I'd say probably first draw a picture. Find their rates and then set up the table of like plastic toy cars. All right, like I'm just gonna imagine, okay. Da, 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 and then I'm gonna use the answer choices. All right. Yeah, I don't have the exact date for that one yet. I'll look and check. It's uh, probably in just a couple of weeks, I believe, uh, but I'll let you know. Um, in order to find any of our classes, Right, So any of our free prep hours, any of our trials, you can always come to our manhattanprep.com GMAT classes free. So on that link, you'll look, you can see when I'm teaching the next one, and then I'll go through the work problems and then like the little bit of a formula for the other one. So by all means, please come hang out with us. Come take uh, any free trial or other free prep hours or our free foundations and math courses. We'd love to see you. Um, but otherwise, it has been a lovely evening. Thank you so much for coming, y'all. It has been a pleasure. For those of you watching on the recording, check out other free prep hours, either recorded or come check out our website so that you can attend one of these live in the future. Have a good rest of your afternoon. Good night.